They call it the Omen by HP. Now this is the 45 liter cryo chamber cooled tower that HP is claiming to be their coolest tower that they've ever built. Now I have the i9 variant in front of me. And we're gonna get into full benchmarks later in the video, but first we're gonna start off with an unboxing. Check out all the components that they use to build out this machine. Check out the build quality. Is this something that you should be considering as a creative professional for your needs? Now I have personally worked with custom PC builds before. I do a lot of laptop reviews on my channel specifically for creative professionals. So why we're seeing a tower on the channel is I like to do content that I think would help you with your buying decision. It'll help you get understand what you need to be getting as a creative professional. Now, if you've watched my channel for a little while, you know that Lori from Tech Notice and myself go back and forth a lot about what is the best machine for creative professionals. Is it a desktop PC? Is it a Windows laptop? Or is it the new MacBook Pro M1 and M1 Max chips? So the goal of any video on my channel or Lori's is to round off your education to pick the right machine for your needs. So if you're a video editor, photo editor, 3D modeler, architect, the gamut, creative professional, what do you need? Now, let's get right into it. Like I said, benchmarks are gonna be coming later in the video. And FYI, this is the first time I am seeing this PC, okay? How I'm gonna do the benchmarks is I'm going to open up the PC, look at it, check it out, talk through it, and then I'm gonna like pause the video on my end, but then I'm gonna clip in after a couple days of benchmarking right on the tail end of this video. So you'll be able to catch everything right here, right now. Comes with a power cord, a little like owner's quick start guide, um, and then the warranty card. Now, I don't know if that's everything that's gonna come in the box if you order this from say HP's website or Best Buy. So make sure you check the product listing when you're ordering this machine. This one came from, you know, kind of the marketing team. And so for me, I don't know if this is exactly how it's gonna come out of the factory if you purchase it. It might include a mouse, it might include a keyboard, it may not, okay? Now I also received the Omen, 27 inch curved display, which we will be using to test the computer here in a little bit. But for now, let's stick to the main event, and that is checking out the build. Oh my gosh, this thing is super, honestly, really heavy. Which, I mean, it's a desktop PC, so it doesn't have to be light. It's just surprising how, uh, how heavy this new cryo chamber is. It's about 49 pounds and it's about 21 and a half inches tall. As you can see, the cryo chamber on top adds a good four to six inches here. Um, and so this is something you're not necessarily gonna wanna like move around your house in order to kind of, you know, figure out where you wanna get comfortable with your setup. Cause it's a pretty girthy machine. Um, I would just, yeah. That's something I noticed. I was like, dang, this thing's pretty heavy. But I mean, overall, that's not a big deal. It's a desktop PC. It's gonna sit under your desk. I just thought, you know, I'd at least get those specs out to you. Now, one thing I really like about the build is you have quick internal access to your parts. Just go ahead and hit that button there on the top and this pops right off. So you really don't need tools to have this thing under a lot of maintenance, okay? So if you're gonna be, you know, working, swapping out RAM, it's very all it's all very easy to access. And that was a big bonus for me. Now let's go ahead and get it turned on and let's talk about what components we have here inside of the build. All right, now first and foremost, we of course have the intercooler uh, that runs up into the cryo chamber up top here. The liquid block obviously sits on top of the CPU. Underneath that is an i9-12900K, okay? Next to the right of it, we have four DDR4 HyperX. I wish they were DDR5, they are not. HyperX RAM sticks and those total to 64 gigs. Now below that, we have our GeForce RTX 3090 card. This thing is crazy powerful. All right, so the benchmarks will be coming up here in just a little bit, and we'll uh, we'll get into those. Obviously, I'm gonna go run those benchmarks, but then I'm gonna include them in this video. So hang on, we're getting close to those. And then actually you have two SSD slots, okay? So it's really hard to kind of figure out where those are with everything in place. But um, Brand said in their uh, kind of like onboarding email and like all the spec out that there are two N.2 slots. Um, and they are both popular. And actually, I think I see one up here. So there's one up here. Let's see if I can get that for you. So there's one up here and looks there appears to be one right here. So there's two M.2 slots. Now, one thing personally that this um, would not be really advantageous for me in my daily workflow, I do a lot of streaming to YouTube um, for different you know, Q and A's and different content. And so all you have is one 
um, extra PCIe lane, and it's not even a 16, okay? So it's I think it's the, the eight. Um, and so it's one extra PCIe lane. I would have appreciated two 16 lanes and then an eight, you know, just in case you have another card you wanna put in here. Let's say you're streaming, you're streaming to mul streaming multiple sources. That's where you could quickly add multiple cards to the machine. You're obviously not gonna add multiple GPUs. The SLS and like the cross, SLS, SLI and the Crossfire has kind of gone by the wayside. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean we don't want additional uh, PCIe lane in for different resources and assets that we're pulling in. Let's say if you're streaming your games, or for me, I'm streaming from my studio, that has been a big benefit to me. Now, as far as ports are concerned, I'm gonna make sure I get all these right. So I'm gonna pull up the spec list here. And uh, on the front IO, which is the top, we have two super speed USB type A's. I'm pretty sure those would be the five gigs. And then we have uh, two USB type A's on the back, two USB super speed type A's. Again, that would be the five gig. Um, yeah, and it's up to five gigs and 10 gigs of speed for those. And on the back, we have the super speed USB type C, five gigs and 10 gigs per second on those. We also have, let's take a quick look here, our network port and our, of course, our headphone and audio jacks. So not a ton of connectivity on the IO ports, but of course on our card, we have the three display ports and the one HDMI. So we have all the connectivity we need. It's not the most advanced um, board that it might be as far as ports are concerned. There's not a ton of ports, but then we also have uh, Wi-Fi connected into the board as well, which is a huge bonus. So obviously a lot of people like to have their network plugged directly in, and that's really my choice, but it is helpful to have Wi-Fi just in case you need it, uh, whether you know you need to tether, if you know your internet goes out at your house. I've had that happen a couple times this year, and so that's a that's a good thing as well. Now, for the hard drives that actually come in this, this uh, unit, we have the WD Black. So we have the Western Digital Black hard drives. Those are pretty quick hard drives. And then as far as parts are concerned, that was one area I was kind of curious about with this build. I mean, a lot of times when you're building PCs, you get to pick all the parts, right? So you get to pick, well, obviously you get to pick all the parts. We don't have to go through that. So you get to pick all the parts and that is pretty advantageous because you know what you're getting, you get the quality of what you want, the brand, etc. When you do a, um, a pre-built PC, you don't get as much choice. You don't get any choice. Um, well, besides maybe like picking the heart, uh, picking the GPU and picking the CPU. So those are kind of some options that you could pick when you're configuring it on the website. And if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this model, you can head down in the description below, click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Yes, indeed. Okay, so choice, that's really what we get down to. But what I really like about this build is they've chosen quality uh, products. So we have Cooler Master fans here on the front three fans. We have a Cooler Master power supply. We have obviously the NVIDIA card Intel CPU, and then we have HyperX Fury RAM. Now, the cool thing about that is recently this year, no, late last year, HP purchased HyperX. So they've kind of been able to blend these two worlds with their Omen PC build. That's been very advantageous for them. However, they gave us DDR4 when I would have chosen DDR5 personally because it's kind of the latest and the greatest. However, it's still great. It still has a lot of power behind it, still has fast speeds, but it's just not as fast as DDR5 by any stretch of the imagination. So that is kind of like a ding there. I wish they would have gone, oh, we lost our lighting. I wish they'd have gone with DDR5 personally. So without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks. I'm gonna go ahead and pull things up here, but I'll bring them up on the screen as we're working through it. Now, first and foremost, Cinebench R20 was absolutely insane. This thing destroyed anything that I have reviewed on my channel. Now you might say, well, Ben, of course you review laptops. Okay, but that is really the question I'm trying to answer here today. Should you get a laptop or should you get a desktop PC? Okay. I'm gonna actually have a full head-to-head -head video versus the 2022 HP Omen and this PC build as soon as I can get my hands on the 2022 HP Omen. But what we're gonna be looking at is the numbers uh, in comparison to a lot of the last year's models. Forgive me, I don't have all the latest data, but you can correlate things to get uh, a good gauge on where this thing fits. Now you will see the latest Apple MacBook Pros, which a lot of people are saying have eliminated any sort of need for PCs or PC builds, which I completely disagree with. And you can check it out me and Lori's video from Tech Notice on that topic. I'll link it up somewhere at the end of the video. Now moving on to Cinebench R23, once again, destroys everything. And I don't see anything in the laptop space catching up to this in the new year. If you know much about laptops or tech in general, it usually only gets about a 
20 to 25 percent increase in performance sometimes 35 percent year over year and so this is clearly a hundred percent more performance than anything in the path which means we're not going to see laptops catching up to a pc build of this nature uh, of this nature of this power in the coming year Moving on to Geekbench single core, you can see that you're not actually going to get a lot of advantage out of a build this powerful in straight single core performance. So later in the video, you're going to see Premiere Pro playback test, you're going to see video editing export times, and you'll see that it actually didn't make that much of a difference. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more in the video, but I wanted to show you that single core performance from this 12900K is really not that much different from, let's say, an i9-11900H out of the Asus Zephyrus M16 from last year. So keep that in mind. Now, Geekbench multi-core, of course, is we're going to see more performance than some of the laptops from Intel because we're dealing with a 16-core, 24-thread CPU. Definitely more multi-core performance. Now, moving on to Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks, the first three, there's not even a competition. This RTX 3090 desktop card is absolutely bonkers. We have well over 130 points more in performance in Autodesk 3ds Max. We have well over 230 points in Autodesk Maya. And in PTC Creo, we have well over 100 points in advantage from this RTX desktop card. Now, moving on to SolidWorks, because this is a gaming card, this isn't a workstation card, you can actually see the laptops with workstation GPUs, such as the Quadro lineup, getting much better performance. So if you're somebody going to be using SolidWorks or some sort of architecture uh, software, uh, or maybe even Revit, something that needs a certified card, this is not going to be your pick and really won't be that much advent advantage to you. I would definitely recommend the Quadro or just workstation GPUs in general from NVIDIA. Now, moving on to After Effects, you can see that this is one area where the MacBook Pros are equal in performance, which is pretty cool to see, and everything else falls down the chart rather quickly. Now, Premiere Pro is where I actually saw a pretty big difference. So, in B-RAW, you can see that it is a 9-minute export time, around 9 minutes and 45 seconds. Most laptops export this in about 18 to 20 minutes, and then for RED footage, we're seeing about an 11 minute export times and most laptops take about 20 minutes to export the red footage clip. And then also, as far as playback is concerned, now the really cool benefit of getting this is 6K red footage playback, zero drop frames. That has not happened on any laptop or any computer I've reviewed on my channel to date. So this is definitely a 6K red footage monster. And if you're gonna be doing that, this would be a great purchase for you. Otherwise, I don't think you need this much performance for 4K video editing, just my personal opinion, even 6K B-RAW. Um, but if you wanna future-proof yourself, then this is an excellent pick for your use case. Now, moving on to Photoshop, I also don't think you need this much performance for Photoshop, okay? You'll be fine in the high 900s and even high 800s for Photoshop. This is a bit overkill in my opinion if you're just gonna be using Photoshop. This is definitely something you wanna be pick up if you're gonna be somebody doing 3D modeling, a lot of After Effects work, and 6K red footage. Now, that's not to dissuade you from this purchase. I think this is a great future-proof opportunity and has a lot of ceiling for what you're gonna be using it for. For instance, if I was live streaming uh, to YouTube, this would never have a hiccup for me no matter how many cameras I had and how much mm, content I was pushing through the laptop. Now, the next thing to talk about is the beloved, I uh, uh, can't see, it. I'll put B-roll, the cryo chamber, okay? So the cryo chamber they're saying is their coolest build that they've ever made, okay? And it got the coolest export time for video editing, 4K thermal that I've ever had on my channel. So it was 42 degrees Celsius at max load for video editing, okay? And so for me, this, is a true story, okay? We got 42 degrees Celsius, the coolest thermal I have ever seen on my channel. So how does that compare to last year? I didn't get to test last year's Omen or last year's Pavilion uh, big desktop setup. So is it their coolest ever? I don't personally know that, but I do know it's the coolest I've ever reviewed on my channel, including the new MacBook Pro, M1 Pro and M1 Max. So big win for this desktop PC in that nature. Here are those videos I was talking about. If you're curious about those, definitely check them out. Otherwise, links are ready to make a purchase. Likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.